For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. for life insurance. Under name, I wrote Jane Stacy. Under description, I wrote brunette, five feet three, brown eyes. Under sex, I wrote female. My roommate, Irma Peterson, filled out the same application. Under name, she wrote Irma Peterson. Description, blonde, five foot three, blue eyes. And under sex, she wrote none of your business. <laughs> Not at all. This is comparatively mild for the adorable little blonde I share quarters with. For example, I happened to remark the other night that there's a new car coming out with the motor in the rear. And Irma said... In the rear? Oh, that's going to be so confusing. What do you mean? Well, supposing something goes wrong with the car, you lift up the hood and there's nothing there. <laughs> Funny, they have four cold tablets and three-way stomach pills, but they haven't found a one-way aspirin that will counteract Irma's remarks. <laughs> so, generally, I ignore them and pick up the newspapers and just read. Jane? What, sweetie? What's new in the paper? Oh, nothing much. Oh, oh, look, isn't that Mrs. Rhinelander's picture on the society page? Where? Right there. Oh, yes, so it is. Let's see. The annual masquerade ball to raise funds for the orphaned children will be held tomorrow night at the Long Island estate of Mrs. Richard Rhinelander II. This marks the first time that Mrs. Rhinelander will supervise the affair. Jane. What is it, sweetie? Did you know about this wonderful affair? Why, you uh, Yes. And of course you're going. Yes, Richard's invited me. Why? Oh, nothing. I'll find something to do. What's that? Nothing, nothing at all. Just sit home with a deck of cards and play some solitude. That's solitaire. <laughs> Look, honey, I I'm not going to have you stand there pouting. You must realize the tickets cost $100 apiece. $100? Oh, it's nothing. Why, well, I could even get my Al to take me if I had $200. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kravatsky. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little sailboats. One trim, the other lost in a fog. <laughs> Why, Professor? Oh, excuse me, girls. A little joke I picked up on the pier. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? There's a burglar upstairs in my closet. Well, for goodness sakes, why don't you call the police? No, I was thinking of calling a psychiatrist. Anyone who could come into that room of mine and expect to find anything must be out of his mind. <laughs> Oh, Professor, you're always exaggerating. Your room is not bad. Oh, it isn't. Uh, well, Halloween will soon be here. And you know how most people put a pumpkin in the window and turn out the lights to scare the children? Yes. I don't have to turn out the lights. I just turn them on. <laughs> no, but what's the use? Irma. Irma, I just noticed. Why are you standing there looking so sad? Oh, Richard's mother's giving a wonderful charity ball and... Jane won't take me. Now, for goodness sakes, Irma, stop making a heavy out of me. I have nothing to say about the invitations. But you have influence with Richard. When a girl goes with a fellow, she can get him to do anything she wants him to. Oh, is that so? Yes, I have Al eating out of my hand. That's only because it's for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, girls, don't argue. Irma, resign yourself. We are not invited, so we are not invited. Although, personally, I would love to help make that affair a success because it's for charity. Little orphans, bless them. The little puppies of humanity. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes, Al. Just a minute. I'll get her. Irma, it's for you. Hello, Al. Where are you? Down at the unemployment office. 
<laughs> what, Al? You need a lawyer? Well, why? Oh, they want you to take a job? <laughs> huh? Well, I don't see how they can make you go to work, honey. This is a free country. <laughs> oh, they say you've been getting it free long enough. <laughs> well, come over here, honey, and we'll talk about it. Goodbye. Oh, that owl. You've got to hand it to him. You've got to hand it to him because he won't work for it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Janie? Janie? Janie. What? Oh, I'm uh. sorry, Professor. I was lost in my thoughts about what costume I should wear to the ball. Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Well, look at your hair. Yes, I'm wearing the new short bob. How does it look? For a minute, I thought your head got caught in the electric fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hush up with you. Janie, darling, do you like it? Oh, I love it. It looks so neat and so clean. Yes, I always felt my face was covered up too much. <laughs> that is a matter of opinion. <laughs> no one asked you. Irma, darling, how do you like my hair? Irma, is something wrong? Oh, Jane's going to Mrs. Rhinelander's charity ball. And I'll be all alone. Irma, we've been all through that. Oh, Janie, how I envy you. Mrs. Rhinelander's such a lovely woman, and I know it must be a worthy cause. Oh, it is. And the ball is being held in the Rhinelander estate in Long Island. Gee, I, I just start shaking when I think of walking into that mansion. Imagine, 68 rooms and 40 baths. 40 baths? Oh, now I know why they call them the filthy rich. <laughs> Janie, darling, you're so lucky. I remember my first masquerade ball. I was a girl in Ireland, and at midnight I met a handsome young man. He took off my slipper and started pouring champagne into it. It held two quarts. <laughs> the bottle, that is. And he insisted on drinking a toast to me beauty. Pretty soon we were both a little, uh, shall I say, hi. <laughs> if you feel it, say it. <laughs> yes, and just as he was telling me how beautiful I was, some wise Ali came along and gave him a broma seltzer. <laughs> it sobered him up, and I never saw him again. My, how the years fly. Yes. And it's too bad, while they were flying, they had to drag you along the ground. <laughs> Why, look here, you. Come in. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Well, what's the convention? Oh, gosh, we're all talking about Mrs. Rhinelander's charity masquerade tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, saw the old gal's picture in the newspaper. Great Dane, that Mrs. Rhinelander. We could go to the ball if we had $100. Chicken, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to help them kids. May be able to do so if my new deal comes through. <laughs> Another deal, Al? What is it this time? Stretching the ears of cats and selling them for rabbits? <laughs> Now, this one is money in the bank. It's a coat lining designed like a deck of cards. So if you're caught with an ace up your sleeve, you can always say you're lining ripped. <laughs> oh, brother. Come in. Hello, Jane. I, uh... Oh, company. Yes, Richard. You know everybody. Yes, indeed. Rich, we all want to tell you how proud we are of the work your mother is doing. And for the orphan. Well, thank you. You see, mother just loves children. Oh, so do I. When Al and I get married, we're going to have lots of children. You know, they say children are man's wealth, and I'm going to make Al a millionaire. <laughs> That's enough, Irma. Richard, is everything set for tomorrow? Yes, yes, but Mother's a little worried. Why? Well, aside from the fact that the money is desperately needed, Mother wants terribly much to put this affair over. You see, last year, Mrs. Van Clive was in charge of the ball, and she raised $50,000. Uh -huh. Well, naturally, Mother would like to get more because it all goes to charity, and besides, she can't tolerate Mrs. Van Clive. Oh. You see, she's been bragging all over town that Mother can never hope to equal her record, and Mother's determined to do it. Wish one of my deals had come through. 
could pitch in. Al, by the time your deals come through, those orphans will be old enough to take care of themselves and their grandchildren. <laughs> well, Richard, I'm sure your mother's party will make more money than Mrs. Van Clive's. I hope so. See you all at the masquerade tomorrow. Oh? Well, certainly. You're all coming, aren't you? Uh, like to be there, Richard, but you know it's um, uh, the fiscal year. I don't want to fisk out on the boys. <laughs> I would like to be there too, Richard, and believe me, it's not the money, but uh, uh, tomorrow is my birthday, and I'll be a hundred dollars old. I mean, um, uh... I would come too, Mr. Rhinelander, but, well, you see, I... Oh, hold it, everybody. Jane, didn't you, didn't you give them their tickets? Tickets? Richard, you didn't give me any tickets. Oh, what's the matter with me? I've been carrying this envelope for days. Here's a ticket for each of you. Let me see, Richard. Admission, one hundred dollars... With stamp pay. That's right. Think you can make it now, Al? Well, it is the fiscal year, but by an odd coincidence, it's also leap year. So I think I'm in a position to leap the fiscal and come to the masquerade. <laughs> and how about you, Professor? Why don't you escort Mrs. O'Reilly? Well, I might do it, since it's for charity. <laughs> uh, she's going to be disguised anyway. <laughs> And here's your ticket, Irma. Oh, let Al hold it. He always likes to treat me. <laughs> oh, Richard, this is so sweet of you. Forget it. Well, think I'll be getting back to Mother. I want to see how close she is to that $50,000 gold. Well, wait a minute, Richard. I'll walk with you. I've got to see about getting a costume. And you kids better get busy, too. Oh, we'll think of something. So long, everybody. See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. How do you like that guy? Shelling out $400 so we can have a good time at his mother's party. Oh, I hope for her sake it's a big success. Yes, Richard's worried about whether his mother can raise $50,000. Must be a way we can make certain she does. <laughs> what do you mean, must be a way? <laughs> well, there are many ways of raising money. Now, for instance, years ago, there was a little boy used to wake up his aunt by bringing a mouse in her room. His aunt would scream and give him a quarter to take it away. He did this every day. And years later, this was to become known in financial circles as getting the ante up. <laughs> Look, Al, let us not meddle in this thing. Yes, let's not ruin the affair. Okay. And speaking of ruins, I think I'll go back to that wreckage I call my room. <laughs> I'll go along with you, Professor. I better get started on my costume right away. All right, Mrs. O'Reilly. And remember, when you're finished, if I recognize you, I don't take you. <laughs> Gee, Al, we don't have much time to get a costume. What shall we wear? Oh, I don't know. I was thinking I might go as Robert E. Lee. Nothing doing, Al. I don't want to spend the whole evening dancing with a steamboat. <laughs> Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found it true. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent Smile. Jean Chadwick of East Orange, New Jersey, will tell you that her smile has made her doubly successful as a singer and as an actress. When just starting her stage career, Jean decided her talents and her lovely smile would be used to best advantage if she both sang and acted her operatic selections. The idea paid off, for that smile and Jean's artistry charmed audiences everywhere. Radio appearances followed, and her own series of television broadcasts, too. No wonder Jean told us. A Pepsodent smile helps any career. I'll always use Pepsodent toothpaste. Like Jean Chadwick, people all over America agree. The smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. In recent comparison tests, thousands of people preferred Pepsodent with Irium over the brands they'd been using at home. Yes, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one for its cool, minty taste, for making breath cleaner and teeth brighter. Try new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium, and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. Well, I have my costume on, and I think it's rather effective. I am going as Marie Antoinette. 
Irma couldn't understand why I spent so much time fixing my hair since I was going to have my head cut off anyway. <laughs> and what I went through before Al and Irma decided what costume to wear, you will never know. First, there was Al, who said... Jane, you know, think I'll go as Jesse James. Nothing doing, Al. You've got to wear a costume. <laughs> right, Jane. And then there was Irma who kept saying, Gee, I don't know what to wear. So I said, Irma, why don't you wear that green costume you wore last year? You know, when you went as a tree? And Irma said, No, someone's liable to come as George Washington and chop me down. <laughs> well, that was all my patience could take. So I said, Irma, you'll just have to make your own decisions. And Irma said, Oh, I know what. I'll wear that kitty outfit that I wore on Halloween last year, huh? So the kitty costume was agreed upon, and I must say, Irma looks adorable with her two blonde braids tied in pink ribbons. If it wasn't for her figure, she could pass for six. Yes, a little schoolgirl to perfection, and I'm sure with those legs, none of the boys would ever play hooky. As for Al, Al has found the most ingenious disguise I have ever seen. He has cut a square hole in the front of his shirt so his tattoo will show, and he's coming as a television set. <laughs> oh, Mother, this is going to be a night to remember. Al. Yeah, Jane? Now, it was very nice of Richard to buy these tickets for us, and all of us must be on our very best behavior. Now, there'll be a number of rich people there, and I'd appreciate it very much if you would not try to sell them any of your real estate lots. Why not? Well, you see, most of them have their yachts floating right over your property. <laughs> well, what about oil wells? No, Al. Why is it everything you deal in either has water over it or under it? Look, Jane, don't worry. This is for the orphans. And I give you my word, you'll be proud of me. Oh, that's good enough for me. Come in. Hello, gang. Say, Jane, you look terrific. Oh, thanks, Richard. And Irma. Well, you're so cute, I feel like putting you on my lap and telling you a bedtime story. Gee, kids have all the fun. <laughs> well, Richard, tell me, does it look as if your mother will reach that $50,000 quota? Frankly, no, Jane. It looks pretty bad. What with the flu and the weather, we'll be lucky to reach 40000 and Mother feels so badly about it. I suppose that Mrs. Van Clive will never stop gloating. Well, you know, she's like that. In Mother's words, Mrs. Van Clive is an old... Uh, 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 uh. Watch your language. There's a little girl here. <laughs> Sorry, little girl. Well, Richard, isn't there any way we could raise more money at the party? Well, once we charge $100 admission, I don't know what else we can do. Maybe we'll think of something at the house. Where's the rest of the gang? Oh, the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly are putting on their costumes. Why don't you and Jane run along? We'll meet you. I'd like that. Mother's so depressed, I'd like to be with her. Come on, Jane. Okay. See you later, kid. Why do you look so sad, Al? Burns me up, chicken. For an affair to help orphans, they can't get up enough dough. And on top of that, a swell gal like Mrs. Ryan is going to be ridiculed by that Van Clive day. Well, Al, what can we do about it? Got to see that the dough is raised. And there's only one man who can help us. Oh, well. Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Gonna mingle with the rich tonight. How do I get money from them? What? No, Joe, it's gotta be with their permission. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is for charity. Orphans. Well, you don't say, Joe. You were an orphan yourself, huh? Well, what happened to your parents? Oh, an accident. They died while listening to chamber music? Oh, gas chamber music. <laughs> well, Joe, then you know what it means to help these kids. Yeah, how do I get them to shell out? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Great idea, Joe. Thanks a million. Goodbye, noble friend. Chicken, for once, Joe has come through. Come in. Hello, little girl. Is your mother... Oh, it's Irma. <laughs> You look like a little doll. Oh, thank you. Do you think I can pass for six? Sure, just be yourself. <laughs> How do you like my costume, Al? Well, what are you supposed to be? Can't you guess? I know, a rag picker. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Professor, where'd you get all them miserable, dirty old rags? Well, yesterday, Mrs. O'Reilly gave me new drapes for my window. Oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> You're wearing the old drapes. No, I'll the new drapes. Well, where's Mrs. O'Reilly? 
Oh, oh don't, don't mention her. She's furious at me. Oh, oh, there she is now. Come here, Miss O'Reilly. Hello, everybody. Hey, Miss O'Reilly, what a swell getter. With that broom and that hair over your eyes, you're a perfect witch. Thank you, Al. And as for you, Professor Kropotkin... No, no, take it easy, Mrs. O'Reilly. What's wrong? He insulted me. That's what he did. Well, what did he say? I didn't say anything. Oh, no. I spend hours getting this witch's costume on. And then when he sees me, he says, It's getting late. Why don't you put on a costume? <laughs> Got no time for personal grudges. Mrs. Reinhardt is in trouble, and we got to come to the rescue. She hasn't raised enough money. No, 10 G short of what Mrs. Van Clive did last year. Oh, glory be in all those poor orphans in such need. What can we do to help, Al? Got just the idea that we'll put this party across. Where do you find the biggest crowds spending money? At Coney Island. Right. Now, here's what we do. We go to Mrs. Van Clive. Mrs. Rhinelander. Charming ball. Thank you, Mrs. Van Clive. Are you having fun? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful idea of yours to have this intimate gathering instead of that tremendous turnout I had at my charity ball last year. Really? Yes. <laughs> of course, you won't make nearly enough to take care of the poor little children. But perhaps next year the committee will realize their mistake and put me in charge of the ball again. You're so nice. Well, I'll try to amuse myself. Uh, where could I get a Manhattan? I'm so thirsty. Right over there at the bar. And you won't need any bitters in your Manhattan. Just smile at it. <laughs> 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 So clever, Mrs. Rhineland. <laughs> well, you'll probably think of something amusing to tell the kiddies when they're told they have to sleep eight in a bed because you couldn't raise the money. <sighs> Toodaloo. Hello, Mother. Oh, Richard. And Jane, you look lovely, dear. Thank you. What's the matter, Mother? You're shaking. Oh, I've just had a word with Mrs. Van Clive, my well-wisher. Oh, Richard, perhaps I've been a fool. Maybe I shouldn't have undertaken the responsibility of the ball. Well, Mother, you did your best. Jane, do you mind if I have this dance with my mother? I think it would be wonderful, Richard. Come on, Mother. Get your mind off, Mrs. Van Clive. This should be a nice waltz coming up. Oh, I'd give anything to put this party across. Uh, hey, the program says a waltz, but they're playing a conga. They're forming a conga line. They're all following the leader. The leader? That's Al. Oh. <laughs> Where is he taking me? Oh, my goodness, he's breaking up my party. Mrs. Rhinelander, I don't know how to apologize. Oh, he's taking them all into the library. What's he up to? I'm afraid to look. <laughs> but I had to look, and I still can't believe my eyes. In front of me is Coney Island. Yes, Al, Irma, the professor, and Mrs. O'Reilly have turned the library into a miniature midway. Al is working the shell game. Now, I know the man. <laughs> I know the man who's trying to guess under what shell the pea is. Last year, this man was in who's who. Ten more minutes with Al in the shell game, and this man will be listed in the 50 neediest cases. <laughs> Al is speaking. That will be $10 more you have lost to me, friend. And I sort of resent your remark that this seems like a dishonest game. Let's try something else. Take a cut. There, that's fine. Let me see. Oh, a king. Now, only an ace can beat that. I shall draw. How do you like that? It's an ace. <laughs> oh, I just can't understand it. I, I never seem to win. Oh, Al. Yeah, chicken? You better sweep up. A lot of aces are falling out of your coat. <laughs> what? Uh, hold it, chicken. Mister, this young lady is just joking. She, she knows I run an honest game, don't I? Miss. Well, Al, I thought you were just going to be the barber here. The barber? Yes, he told me he's going to clip everyone who came near him. Come on, chicken. Now, where are you dragging me? The gentleman may misunderstand, and I want to give this dough to Mrs. Rhinelander. Well, look, it's the professor. Hello, professor. Can't talk now, Emma. Here comes another customer. Uh, pardon me, do you tell fortunes? Oh, certainly. Your name, madam? Uh, Mrs. Van Clive. Aha, uh -huh, I see. <laughs> Let me see your palm, please. 
Oh, I see a sparkling future. Happiness, gaiety, laughter. <laughs> and then you get hit by a truck. <laughs> You are swinging between life and death. Only one doctor can save you. What's his name? A professional secret. Cost you $50 to find out. <laughs> well, here's the $50. What's his name? Uh, who do you go to now? Dr. Jones. He's a good man. Keep going to him. Next question. <laughs> As if that's not enough, over in the right-hand corner are two booths. One is marked lemonade, $1. The other kisses, $5 apiece. But they're not doing any business. Oh, no wonder. Al has made a mistake. He's got Irma selling lemonade and Mrs. O'Reilly selling kisses. <laughs> well, I'm getting out of here so fast, the super chief will look like it's backing up. Jane, 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 where are you going? Oh, Richard, I'm so mortified. I want to get out of here before your mother throws us all out. Throws you out? Why, Jane, mother's in heaven. Al and his friends have already turned in enough money to more than pass our quota, and the guests are having so much fun, they insist mother hold the ball next year. You mean that? Richard? Sure, Jane. Come on. Let's congratulate Al. Oh, Al? Yeah? Al, on behalf of my mother... You don't have to say anything. We're doing it for a swell lady and a bunch of wonderful kids. Oh, Al. Al. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> but one thing still bothers me. Irma, what were you doing in the lemonade booth? Weren't you supposed to sell kisses? Yes, but Al said to get over there in that booth and pucker up and... Lemons make me pucker. <laughs> well, lemons or grapefruit, what can I say except that there's never been a sweeter kid than my friend Irma. <laughs> Your winning smile is a Pepsodent smile. Again and again, people have found the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. That's borne out by the vote of thousands who tried new Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium in a recent nationwide test. These people were given plain, unlabeled tubes of Pepsodent and were asked to compare it with the brands they were using at home. When their votes came in, Pepsodent won by the overwhelming average of three to one. These people say new Pepsodent tastes better makes their breath cleaner and their teeth brighter than any other toothpaste they tried. Remember, that's not just our opinion. That's what people say. They say it three to one. They've seen Pepsodent with Irium remove the film that makes teeth look dull, uncover new brightness in their smiles. Try it and you will see the smile that wins is the Pepsodent smile. by Cy Howard. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it's brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Irium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Marie Wilson is starred as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. The part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried was heard as Professor Kropotkin and Gloria Gordon as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. The Community Chest Campaign is your opportunity to make one contribution to all your local agencies for health, welfare, and recreation. Nearly half the families in your community will benefit through Red Feather Aid. Support the Community Chest. Everybody benefits, everybody gives. This is Wendell Niles reminding you to tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.